now be recorded. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us. Sorry I was a little late to this. Um, I'm going to call the uh, Board of Water, Wastewater Commissioners meeting for Thursday, March 4th at 1 o'clock to water. Um, first is the uh, consent agenda for uh, the minutes for January 26th, 2021, and February 11th, 2021. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I'm I move we adopt the minutes for January 26, 2021, February 11, 2021, as presented. Is there a second? Is there a second? Uh, I'll, I'll take a vote by roll call. Alan? Aye. Judith? Aye. And it's nice myself. Thank you. Uh, we have no abatement. Uh, this week, so we'll move on to old unfinished business, water rules and regulations. So to start this off, um, before I turn it over, first to just recognize, um, you know, the work that Sandy, Tracy, and Wellesley did here on the, on the rules and regulations. Um, you'll notice there's a, a reformatting that was, that it was done, um, the addition of a, um, table of contents and some other edits so i just wanted to recognize their efforts before i turn it over first to sandy um and then we'll go through the list all right oh we can't hear you sandy the microphone is on your microphone's showing green here Do you want to try to dial in and we can jump over to Wellesley? I don't know what's going on today. <laughs> Must be me. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just your turn, Gary. <laughs> I guess so. Jeez. Well, we all get to uh, yes, I, I'm on. Hi, Sandy. Oh, this is Wellesley. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I can't Hi, Gary. Hi. <laughs> sorry. So, uh, yes, it's it's been a little while since we've done a few revisions to the rules and regs. Um, so what all of us did was we reviewed the language and we found a few areas that really should be looked at for uh, revisions uh, as far as replacing some language um, that is, you know, at times confusing or not clear, um, adding some language that will help uh, define the regulation or rule that we have in place, or removing um, a, a section that might not be relevant uh, anymore. So basically the, the items that we made recommendations on uh, were, you know, put together by all of us and, and sort of um, based on items that have come up over the years uh, where these changes um, really are sort of necessitated uh, a change in the regs so that we're all clear on the interpretation. All right. Sandy, are you on now? Uh, yes. Can you hear me now? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Echo. Sorry about that. Um, so I went back to listen um, to all of the um, meetings that you reviewed the regulation. Um, and so I just confirmed all the changes that are made within the document that you have. Um, those changes um, that were already reviewed and, and accepted are in yellow. Um, and you'll see some of it is striped through in black and the rest is red. Um, in addition to that, I did find some definitions. Uh, we were a little weak on the definitions. So I did add a few if uh, the board is in agreement with keeping them. Uh, they're highlighted in yellow. Uh, such as the backflow, backflow prevention device, cross connection, um, irrigation submeter, that is going to be uh, to be continued. But the de there's a definition there, uh, meter pit and curb stop. So those are new definitions 
uh, new to you that I've added in. Um, if you agree, they will be helpful. Moving along, um, when I pass these, uh, the documents around, uh, Wellesley and Tracy also found some other items that could be worded better for better, you know, better comprehension and understanding. Um, so those items are in gray. So if you look through and we can go to um, the first section, um, actually in the preface, I, I highlighted in gray um, to confirm Mass General Laws Chapter 41 because now um, where your water, wastewater, I just wanted to confirm that um, we're referencing, making the correct reference. Um, water slash wastewater has been added, you know, slash wastewater has been added to every area where the board is mentioned within the regulations. That was another addition. Um, but if we move to, let's see, page nine. At the bottom of page nine is um, another uh, edit to the payment plan process. And um, just to make it a little more clear uh, that, you know, if an individual is requesting a payment plan, they must not be in arrears more than one calendar year is what was existing. Uh, we would like or are recommending to modify that to potentially be no more than two billing periods. So that's a six months in arrears versus a whole calendar year in arrears. So that is um, up for your consideration. Um, moving to page, I don't know how you wanna, you know, do you, I guess, want to discuss these as we go along, or we can cover them, and then as we're, there's going to be several meetings to follow um, that we're, you know, you'll, this will be on the agenda. Um, we still have the irrigation meters to work through as well. So any section that is in gray is uh, new recommendations brought to you. And I don't know if everybody's had a chance to review those um, and or do we want to look at them one by one? Um, I think at this point we can just, if you want to just do the highlights, that's fine. And then we can, like you said, we still have to come back and um, uh -huh. look at this again. So, um, okay. I mean, if, if there's anything significant that you, you'd like to point out and then we can still review it and um like i said like you said we still have to come back anyway if that you know yeah. if that's okay with alan and judith well, I, i've read them all you know i've had the, the uh, opportunity to go through it all i, I think it's uh, fantastic you know it, we could still do it uh, you know take your time um uh, but uh it it's uh it, it's a real change uh it's a good change. Um, and as I read it, there was a couple things, but I can't remember what I thought about. So I'm game to, you know, uh, uh, like put it on the agenda for the next trip in and to adopt okay. or uh, amend and uh, to give, ever, give us all a chance to really uh, dig in. Um, the only thing I found uh, one item under page, on page 14 under 510, uh, the, uh, in the third line there, of seasonal service, um, uh, it, uh, it uh, has beings in there and it needs to be begins, uh, that type over there. Good catch, Alan. That's an important word in that uh, paragraph. Yes, thank you, Alan. No uh, he's just showing off. He's just showing off right now. 
but there's a couple of areas that I, you know, want to read again and, and digest and, um, you know, that uh, historically that these, some of these rules have in a way worked against us, you know? So, um, as I say, uh, it take a little more time. This, this is very important. Uh, okay. and, but what a, what a great change. I mean, it's fantastic. Yeah, I agree. It's, uh, it's uh, 15 years overdue. Judith, any comments at this point? Um, no, I, I just wish Sandy were around when I was doing my master's thesis. I <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's, yeah, uh, you, you guys have been doing good work. It, Thank it, you. Much. Okay, so let's clearly. let's leave this on the agenda for our next meeting, and we'll um we'll move to make a vote on it. Yeah. And, yeah. If I can just yeah yeah a little to the conversation. Um, you know, as Sandy alluded to, up in the definitions area, there's there is a, a place there for for conversation about the irrigation meters. Um, you know, with respect to, to sewers coming on board and, and that discussion needing to take place. Um, right now, the Munis training is scheduled for next week, um, where we're going to be getting into some of the, the internal stuff within Munis for setting up the irrigation accounts and things of that nature to, to support us as we move forward with wastewater. Um, Sandy has also compiled a, a, a bulk of information with respect to what some other communities do for for irrigation meters with respect to sewer billing. Um, so once once the MUNIS training takes place and we can really determine what options we can um, deploy here in Harwich, if there's any limitations in our software, we'll be coming back to the board um, again with, with additional information and recommendations for the irrigation meter policy. Um, All right, that's, that's great, Dan. Thank you. Two, as well, on the last, um, you know, when we, the end of the rules and regulations, when we get into the, the rates and fees um, tables, and, and we can get into it now or in the future, um, you know, one of the things that we've noticed is we've been doing some work looking into wastewater billing and whatnot is that oftentimes the, the departments have a, a one rate and fee schedule for both water and sewer rates. Um, so in the, in the packet today in the water rules and regulations, there's the proposed water rates for July. Um, it may be something we want to consider putting the sewer rates on there as well, but also take this opportunity before we adopt the rules and regulations to look um, again at some of our, uh, some of our fees. Um, I, I believe it was Sandy or that brought it up at one point about making sure that what our billing rate is actually covers the cost of having our employees uh, on the job. Um, that exercise was, was gone through some time ago. And I think, you know, cost of living and, and all these things that that could be looked at. Um, another item could be tapping fees, um, you know, in both residential, but also in, in larger developments. Um, I think we've touched upon it briefly in the past, but you know, some towns will charge $20,000 for, you know, an eight inch tap on, you know, to build a new sub development and, and the fees associated with that could be earmarked for the development of, of new well sources that are going to be required to supply water to those new subdivisions. Um, you know, so there's so, some other things that, we may want to consider before we move to the formal adoption, um, but we can, you know, bring those back as, as the information presents itself. Can I ask oh, a question on that? Good oh, question. Thank you, Gary. Um, and if this is a bigger conversation, we can do it later. But uh, so new well exploration that sort of piece of, of a budget that is always under the water department that does not come out of the general like it's correct yeah no that's all out of our our retained earnings or, or bonding that we would do okay thanks alan you had a question no i, I i'm grateful for right now okay. i uh, all head in the right direction all right, thank you, Dan. Cool.
course. All right. Oops. All right, let's move on to uh, the Weld M3 repair. So I just wanted to update the board at our last meeting. I, I believe it was the last meeting I made you aware that we had that weld um, go down. The motor failed, and we, we went out and did some testing. So just to let the board know that um, the drilling contractors come in, they've replaced the motor, and we are back up online. So oh, nice. Yeah. Hmm. All right, let's move on to uh, Lothrop Ave pump control programming upgrade. So the um, Bernie's been out working with the vendor this week um, on that reprogramming. So I would say 90% complete. And the only reason I leave out 10%, um, if you recall the work that was being done, we were adding a, a screen to allow the operator to go in during water main flushing or in the event of a fire should we require more flows that it would be really a one button um pick the flow rate and hit start and we could very easily start that pump station to support whatever operation we're doing outside um so the programming has been written and installed um, and we did do some testing on it only up to about 700 gallons per minute um and we only went to that flow rate because right now the other tank is being offline, the Pleasant Lake tank being offline. We didn't really want, not looking to push the limits of our, our system right now. So once that system comes back online and um, we have that additional air vent, you know, to atmosphere, we can fully, fully test that out to the, the full range of the pump station. But it, it is done and installed. Awesome, that's great. Um, then, uh, I, yeah, good, Alan. Here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I have to wonder why uh, that wasn't installed when the the, uh, the system was uh, initially put in place. As I recall, that we called on that pump station to kick in, and it was a problem. Uh, I finally had to have somebody up there manning it in order to, uh, I forget what the event was, either the broken main or uh, uh, a fire or something, but it uh, you couldn't do anything with it at the time. Oh. Yeah, so right now, the way the so the, the, the tank over on Lothrop really operates in two, two primary functions. There's summer mode and winter mode. Um, in summer mode, the, the concern about, uh, you know, additional fire flows or things like that would be handled just through the normal operation of the, the tank and the pump station, because that okay. pump station is programmed to maintain a target pressure set point in the distribution system. So for example, if, if the fire department came out and opened a hydrant and dropped the pressure in the distribution system, that pump station would say, okay, too low, got to kick on. And, and it would pump in as much water as it needed to maintain that target uh, set point. In winter months, because we don't need to run the tank because uh, you know the, the water demand isn't there, um, we're really operating that pump station to cycle in and cycle out the water so we don't have stagnant water, keep the water quality good. So mm -hmm. during the winter month operation, it pumps in to the tank, um, you know, for a few hours in the morning and then pumps out of the tank in the afternoon, irregardless of what the pressures are doing. So this, this additional programming uh, component was really to, to give us that additional functionality during the winter. Um, so if we're not running it based off of a target pressure set point, that we can still very easily, um, you know, give them the service they need. Okay. Okay. Got it. Judith, any questions or comments so far? And to Alan, just, oh. just one more quick note. And the reason, part of the reason too, with the, that we don't want to run it in, in summer mode uh, all throughout the winter is it operates a lot more and it's a lot higher of elect an electric cost for us to run it at that pressure sustaining mode during the winter when it's not necessary. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks to that, Dan. Um, Pleasant Lake tank project. <clears throat> yeah. So, I'm going to share my screen here for just a minute. I have a couple items to share.
All right, so let me know if you see my screen here. Yep. So just to give you guys an update, and I think that, that the plan, I hope, will help uh, graphically show you better what's going on. Um, so the, the contract for Trumbull Construction has been out working on the tank for a few weeks now. Um, they've demoed all the interior piping and, and they've been working on the overflow piping. So the overflow piping um, is what's right here in the center of the screen, if you bear there in the, in the red cloud here. So this is the pipe that has now to date been installed. Um, they had the welding inspector out yesterday and today to, to field inspect the welds on this pipe uh, prior to, to painting, painting that. Um, this week, you just shift over here. They have been shifted from inside the bowl assembly to outside, and they are installing this section of pipe that runs horizontally over to the edge of the finial of the tank, and where it ultimately will drop down and into the control room before leaving the tank here. So that is current progress for the contractor. Right now, they are looking for subcontractors to install the do the concrete work here for this base elbow that's going to be in the control room um, which is right here if you can see the bottom left of the tank i don't know what you can see on my screen but um and also install this 90 outside the exterior wall at the base of the tank and the first run of pipe which gets me to our second uh, component of the P Lake tank update. So as I believe I've uh, expressed at our last meeting, um, we were looking at doing some of the exterior piping internally for um, with our staff. So Steve has put together a materials list um, with our waterworks vendor and the materials to install that pipe are approximately 78,000. So when we projected our um, available funds in our budget for the current fiscal year, um, it looks as though we certain we, it looks as though we're going to have that amount of money within our budget to take that project on. Um, right now, Sandy is going to be verifying um, the appropriate line items that we could fund that from, and what I would do be looking to do next would because of the value of the materials, it does have to go out to bid. So we'd have to put it out in the um, on the street for two weeks and hold a bid. Hopefully that will give us uh, even more competitive pricing. Um, but once that's complete, we would then be in position for, for our staff here to go and, and make the connection from the tank over to where the, the water main comes underneath the highway, um, the other side of the site, which I can show you on my screen here in just a moment. So the image here on the left is the old piping layout, which comes down and comes out. Um, you can see, let's see right here. So this is the existing pipe and it is proposed to be demolished and rerouted um, out through this, this path here. So this is what our staff would be doing is making this connection. So it's about, I wanna say, three to 500 feet, it's 24 inch pipe. Um, and, and materials aside would probably be saving, um, you know, the taxpayers about, I'd say two to 300,000 by completing this work internally. <clears throat> That's great, Dave. I'm glad that we were capable of doing that scope of work, especially like at the cost of the um, uh, labor. So that's great. The, uh, Alan or Judith, any comments or questions? No, uh, what is that 24 inch hook into? 24 inch under the highway? It goes 16 in two directions. So the. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So it'll be feeding okay. down towards the tech school and then underneath the highway. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm good. All right. Judith? I'm good. Thanks. All right. Uh, moving on to uh, new business, unregulated containment, contaminant monitoring rules. 
Yeah, so this is, I just received notice um, from EPA the other day of the advertisement for, this is the initial advertisement, if you will, for the unregulated contaminant monitoring rule five. Um, so some may recall, and um, I believe Gary and Alan were here, I believe Judith came on board after, but when we did the UCMR three and four, um, that was done, I believe it was in 2015, right when I came on board, um, when we did the, the first round of national PFAS testing. Um, so the UCMR five has 30 contaminants, 29 of them are perfluorinated or polyfluorinated compounds. So it's a much more comprehensive um, evaluation of, of perfluorinated compounds in the groundwater, um, as well as they're also looking for lithium is the is their last um, contaminant. Um, so that is gonna take place in 23 and 24. Um, in addition, we also have um, new PFAS testing at the local level um, through DEP. The new PFAS regulation has been put into effect and we will be conducting our first round of samples um, this April, so next month. Um, so I just wanted to put that on the board's radar um, that that UCMR sampling is upcoming also that we are going to be conducting quarterly samples for PFAS as part of the new regulation um, in case anyone seeking information from you folks. Thanks for the information, Dan. Appreciate it. And Dan, can I ask a question, Gary? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, for the testing, the sampling rather, um, do you have to do from all different sites or is it? Uh... Yeah. So it, it's, we're, we're required to sample at the distribution entry points. So we have five of those locations in town. All right, Alan, all set? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, just in case anybody doesn't know what we're discussing, we're talking about PFAs. So we're in your face these days. <laughs> all right, I'm good. Uh, okay, Dan, superintendent's report. Um, yeah, one thing I wanted to update the board on at our last meeting, um, you may recall, I was discussing the land acquisition grant and the potential use of DRI funds for the land acquisition on Chatham Road. <laughs> Um, I did reach out to the Cape Cod Commission this week and spoke to them on the phone. Uh, ultimately, they, they reinforced again that the proposed use for those funds is applicable and, and would be a great use for them. And also, um, the funds could be or can be distributed upon the development of a, a proper purchase and sales agreement. Now, that said, it's difficult to draft one of those and we don't know who we're buying the land from. So the first thing that we need to do is um, conduct the deed or, you know, or title research. So um, what I'd be looking to do now is reaching out to our legal counsel to, to get some direction on them as to the best mechanism to do that deed research so we can take this to the next, um, next step. I, I, I say go ahead. <laughs> and just as a reminder that the DRI funds are 100% reimbursable where the DWSP grant was only 50% reimbursable. So, so it's a, a better deal, um, much better deal for the town. Yeah, that's great, Dan. Thank you. All right. Um, commission's report. Alan? No, I'm good. Judith? Uh, I'm good as well. All right, I just have a couple of things. Um, do you know where we're, Dan, do you know where everyone is as far as the uh, ethics training? I believe everyone is done. Um, Sandy, if yes. you're on, if you would mind, I, I know uh, she was I, collecting sure. signatures. Can you hear me? Yeah, I got yeah. to turn in my everything. Yep. Um, Judith, I don't, I'm not sure if you turned yours in directly. Or not. Yeah, I think I need okay. to do that again. Yeah. Okay. I have a cover page for the Board of Water Wastewater Commissioners on my desk. So uh, you, it, when you, it's convenient if you could stop by and sign that. And then if you want to uh, do the training and can you know, bring me the certificate or scan and email it, I can submit them as a group. Um, Alan, do you have a certificate? 
um, to provide. And uh, Gary, I have both of your, you're all set, Gary. Yep, okay, great. So um, thank you for bringing that up because yeah, we it's due by April 4th, I believe. So we still right. have a little bit of time, but at the same right. time, it's nice to get it taken care of. Right, all right, thank you. Uh, Dan, uh, how about periwinkle? Do you know what the status is on periwinkle, how, how that's going along? So I do know that the guys went out and flushed again. Um, I was actually talking with Steve about that uh, this week about trying to get some test pits tentatively scheduled when the weather is a little bit better um, to go out and look. Um, so that's at least the substance of our discussions at this point. Okay. Um, and then now that the, um, there's new uh, phases in effect in Massachusetts, um, with reopening uh, things, where are we as far as meeting in person? Is that um, going to be something we have to do or? Um, so what I, uh, so I, I thought that this week we would be um, under the governor's order on the 50% occupancy that we would be able to kind of open our doors again. Um, after speaking with the health director, uh, they advised that we're not yet capable or are able to open our doors to the public. Um, as far as when we can meet again, um, my understanding based off of uh, the department head meeting is that we that they think that that's gonna be when Baker opens to 100% capacity um, and that the remote meetings will likely be, they were one of the first things that were added and allowed and, and um, the thought is that those would be one of the last things that's taken away. Because okay. even as we move out of it, some people are still going to be reluctant to, to gather. Right. Okay. I just um, wanted to see where we were with the guidelines. I, yeah, I get my second shot next week. Wow. You're lucky. Uh, I, you know, it's been a real nightmare for some people on the keep. Yeah, that's what you get when you get old. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, if I can, I, I, I did miss something under my report, if you don't mind. We're, we're, already, beyond, we're already beyond that, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. The, um, the budget hearings for the Board of Selectmen and Finance Committee uh, just got distributed yesterday afternoon or yesterday morning. So uh, the Water Department is currently scheduled to present our budget to on Saturday, March 13th, which is next Saturday. Um, we are, let's see, fifth on the list beginning at 9 a.m. All right. And where is it, Stan? Um, oh, I believe uh, it's going to be remote. Yeah. Remote. Yeah. I was originally remote. Yeah. Silly. Okay. All right. Um, any other questions or comments for Dan regarding those issues? All right. I just want to close with um, just to clarify something. I was reading uh, the Oracle the other day. And it was pertaining to the uh, meeting with the selectmen about the funding for the uh, West Harwich project there, the $150,000. And um, in the article, it looks as though um, I was commenting during the meeting about our position for that funding source. And just to clarify, I was on that meeting, but I was only on that meeting to report on behalf of the War Department. It was the annual report that we do every year. Um, so and by no means was I um, representing the board of commissioners uh, during that conversation. In fact, I never commented on that that um, discussion. I left the meeting before that was even had. So if you read the article in the paper, it kind of looks as though I, I was commenting on it, and that's just not the case. So just wanted to clarify that because um, I, I would never um, personally comment on the board's position unless we've already voted or taken a position on something. So. I just want to, you know, get that out there so that we're all on the same page. Okay. And, uh, that's, that's really all I have. Okay. So, right. next meeting? So, um, the week of the 15th to the 19th. Uh, Thursday the 18th, is that good? 
That's fine with me, yep. Could we do the 19th? The Friday? That's fine with me as well. Yeah, Alan? Yeah. yeah, hi, I'm good. Okay. Dan, Morning. does that work? Morning, Carl. Fine with me. All right, Great. perfect. All right, I'll take care of St. Patrick's Day. I yes. didn't want to say that. <laughs> I'll take uh, a motion to adjourn. So moved. And I'll take a vote by roll call. Alan? All right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me back I'll up. I need a second. I'll second. I'll second. Thank you, Judith. Thank you. Uh, Alan? All right. Judith? Aye. That's time for myself. Thank you very much, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks.